Welcome to the World Register. The World Register is an independent news source providing truthful, unbiased, and timely reporting about people, places, and events. Reuters News Agency reports today that a U.S.-Russian brokered ceasefire for southwest Syria held through the day. The United States, Russia, and Jordan reached a de-escalation agreement during U.S. President Donald Trump's first meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin at the G20 summit in Germany this week. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a Britain-based war monitoring group, said calm was prevailing with no airstrikes or clashes in the southwest since the truce began at noon on Sunday. A spokesman for the Awiyat al furkan rebel faction in the Quinitra area said, quote, The situation is relatively calm. Major Assam al rays spokesman of the Southern Front Coalition of Western-backed rebel groups, said a cautious calm continued into the evening. Another rebel official in Dura City said there had been no significant fighting. It was quiet on the main Manshaya front near the border with Jordan, which he said had been the site of some of the heaviest army bombing in recent weeks. A Syrian official indicated that Damascus approved of the ceasefire deal, describing the government's silence over it as a sign of satisfaction. We welcome any step that would cease the fire and pave the way for peaceful solutions, the government official told Reuters. RT reports today that North Korean state media has condemned a U.S. bombing drill on the Korean peninsula, warning that the move could spark a nuclear war. The editorial, published in state newspaper Rodong Sinmun Sunday, accused the U.S. of military provocations. The editorial also stated that the U.S. is, quote, intensely promoting a nuclear war atmosphere in the Korean peninsula and is pushing the situation to the blast phase, end quote. The U.S. sent two B-1 strategic bombers to carry out live fire tests on a training range in South Korea on Friday. Fighter jets from South Korea and Japan also joined in the drill. The exercise, which targets mock enemy missile launch sites, came three days after North Korea pointedly tested an intercontinental ballistic missile on the 4th of July. And World Net Daily reports today that John Alibi, 53, a Christian and a landlord who lives in the Toronto, Canada area, is being ordered to pay a fine of $12,000 by the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal because he failed to remove his shoes when he entered the apartment he was renting to a Muslim couple. The tenants were planning to move out and he says he gave the couple the required 24 hours notice that he would be showing the apartment to another tenant. They told him not to come while they were praying and to text first. He agreed. But when they stopped answering his text messages, he showed the apartment. The Muslim tenants waited eight months before filing their grievance with the Human Rights Tribunal where they received free representation. The couple searched his Facebook page and found a joke they considered offensive and used it to bolster their case. The tribunal agreed he harassed them and failed in his duty to accommodate their religious needs and awarded them $6,000 each, plus interest. A lobby says he does not have the money to pay the fine and does not know what he is going to do. The father of three asked, quote, what about my rights to show my place so I could rent it and put food on the table for my family? End quote. Alabi added, It has just shattered me. I am broken. I am broken.